of Let's go in here. Alrighty, let me get this set up. What is that? Let's double check this. I'm going to check to see if that is working. Yeah. That's working. And I need to check to see if my other alert thingy is working. Thanks for the follow. Okay, that's working. Hey there, I'm just checking something. Were you able to hear... Why are we hating? We're not hating anybody, anything. Oh, I was just checking to see if they were working. So you heard that. Did you hear the thanks for the follow thing, I, the test I just did? Okay. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That was just a test. I mean, obviously nobody was following me at that moment. How are you? My eyes. Poor eyes. Okay. Let's... I'm not crying. <laughs> Alrighty. My, um... Students that wanted to learn, I don't know if they're here right now. But if not, I'm still going to... Um, I'm still going to... Whoa, 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 we're not going to do that. We're still going to proceed with um, 
the lessons from last week. No, I haven't been streaming in a few days and everything, issues, whatever, everything's fine. But we're getting back to normal. Well, as normal as possible. So we gonna get to go back to basics. And last time we streamed, we did the chain stitch, the slip stitch, and the chainless foundation single stitch. Now we're going to do single crochet and double crochet. And also we will do, I'll retouch or recap the chainless foundation single. I will also show the chainless foundation doubles. Yes, normal. Those, um, those of you who are crocheters, this is all going to be just review. Those that are new, welcome. If you're watching on the playback, you can always play it back slower if I'm going too fast. So we're going to do the single crochet. First, what we're going to do is we're going to chain like we did last week. I just did 20 chains. Actually, I'm going to do 21. And if you need to learn how to do the chain, check on my uh, YouTube channel for the last video I did. It's um, all about chaining. So after you do the chain, if you look at your chain, it's like a braid. You find these little links. That's why they call it the chain stitch. It looks like little links on a chain. You're going to skip the first one and the second one back. You'll notice that it's made up of three strands. There's different techniques of how to go in and do the stitch. I'm going to show the real basic one. I'm not going to show you the back bump. So we're going to go to the second chain from the hook. The loop on the hook does not count as a stitch. It counts as nothing. We're going to skip the first chain and the second chain back. You've got two strands and then there's one strand at the bottom so you're going to put your hook in between the bottom strand and the next strand i know it's kind of difficult to see with my camera but down here that's where you're going to put the hook in put your hook in under the top two strands and over the bottom strand put it in grab the strand, the, the strand coming from the working ball, bring it up. We have two loops on the hook. Then we're going to yarn over, so we're going to wrap, and we're going to pull that strand through those two loops. That's a single crochet. I'm going to show that one more time. We're going to go to the next chain. So we're working from right to left to the next one. You're going to find those three strands. You're going to go on top of the bottom one and under the middle one. So there's there's a middle one. I don't know how well that's showing up. You're going to go between the bottom and the middle. Put your hook into it. You're going to grab the yarn and pull it through what you just went through. Two on the hook, then you're going to yarn over and pull it through the two that, those two loops. You're going to continue that all the way down. Again, those of you who are watching and also watching on the YouTube replay, if you're part of the Discord and you have, you can't get this, you can always message me or message anybody in the Discord. And I can always help you go back and 
learn this stitch. This is the basic single crochet stitch. And we're going to do that all the way to the end. You're going into the chain, grabbing the strand, pulling it through, and then yarning over and pulling it through the two loops that are on the hook. When you finish a stitch, you're always going to have one loop on the hook. That's how you know the stitch is complete and you're ready to do the next stitch. Go into the next chain. Go in. And it's, I know it's very difficult with the lighting and the shine of the metal. Let me hold that again. Go into the chain. Grab the strand. Bring it through. And then yarn over and bring that yarn over through the two on the hook. And that's the single crochet. You're going to do it all the way to the end, even the very last chain. So I chained 21. When I originally did my first chain, I had 21. But now I have 20 stitches because that very first chain does not count as a single crochet stitch, it's a turning chain because you have to turn to do the next row. So usually when you do single crochet, if you're just doing it right into the chain, you want one more chain than you have stitches to account for that turning. And I'm going to show you what an actual turning chain is on a finished row. So we finish the row here. When we get to the end, you're going to chain one and turn. That's why they call it a turning chain, because it's the chain you make when you turn the row. So you're going to turn it over. And now it's going to be a little bit easier to find your stitches after you do an, a row of single crochet. Stitching into the chain is always the uh, most difficult thing, even for um, veteran crocheters. It still can be a pain. So now we have the stitch here. You got a little bit of a, a hole there. Well, you're going to go in. We chained one, and that chain one is going to give us height. So it's going to give us the right height that we need for our stitch. So now after we've chained one, we're going to go into that very first hole, that first stitch. And if you look at the stitches, the very the top edge, not the flat, not when it's laying flat, when it's on edge, you've got these V's. They form these V shapes. So you're going to go under those two V's. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go into the stitch, grab your yarn, bring it through, two on the hook, yarn over, and bring that yarn over through the two on the hook. That's a single crochet. Hey there, Upcycly, how are you? I'm just showing the basics this month. Real basic stitches for anybody who's new to crochet. And I've got some, some people that had, had asked some basic questions. So we're just going 101. Yeah, I have a YouTube. Yep. It should pop up um, in the chat. I don't have the command set for that because I don't remember how to do it. It'll periodically will come up. It's also in... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the... Um, I'll, I'll get it here. I'll get it. I'll get it. Let's see here if I can figure this out. You scrolled, okay. 
um, I can never figure out the um, how to get to the link. Anyway, it's it's at the Crafty Cub. It's also in the um, about section of my uh, um, Twitch stream here. You have a friend that needs to learn. I'm going to have her find a single crochet film. Okay, yeah. That's what I'm doing right now is single crochet. They can always re-watch re this because any of the streams that I do, all of my streams are uploaded raw. I don't edit. They go right to it. So they can watch this. Also, if they are if they're a member of the Discord, you can always send them an invite to, to my Discord. And I can always show them or give them some pointers when needed. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the stitch. We have one loop, one loop on the hook. That's how we start out our stitches. Put the... I need a non-shiny metal hook because it's reflective. So if it's bothering me, it's probably bothering everyone else. And I'm not using plastic. I am not using plastic. And I'm not a big fan of some wood or bamboo hooks. Some of them are okay. But with an acrylic yarn, I'd rather use metal. That's just my pref personal preference. So we're going to put our hook into the next stitch. I'm trying to make it so there's not much that much glare and still show it. So we're going to put our hook into the stitch. Clover has matte, matte aluminum. Okay. That's what I could use. I could use one of my colored aluminum hooks. I think there's a darker color. I'll have to get them out for next stream. So I'm going to go, like, inexpensive boy brand hooks. So I'm going to put it into the next stitch. I'm going to grab the strand here. Bring it through the stitch. Two loops on the hook. Going to yarn over and bring that yarn over through those two loops. That is the single crochet. One of the most basic stitches, a very useful stitch. And these are U.S. terms. I should mention that. these are. I'm, I'm in the U.S. These are U.S. terms. If you're in the U.K. or any other any other place that uses U.K. terms, this is called, called something totally different. And I'm not going to confuse anybody. It can get confusing to determine what they call it. But that this is the single crochet. Again, I use U.S. terms. And that is how you do single crochet. Real simple, real basic. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out those two rows. I'm going to keep my chains. I'm taking out all my singles. And now we have our chain. Back to our chain. And what we're going to do is we're going to do double crochet. U.S. terms, double crochet. I need to change the color of my font because it's washing out of my hand. Actually, you know what I what I can do right now for this? I could do this on the fly. I am going to move that down a little bit. And I'm going to... I gotta unlock that. I'm gonna move that like that. So now it's not going to be interfering with what's on screen. Now we're doing something called the double crochet. We're still gonna interact with the chain the same way that we have been. The only twist is when we start, we have a loop on our hook. And then we're going to wrap our hook. 
It's called a yarn over. Anytime we do that, that's a yarn over. So we're gonna wrap the hook. And for a double crochet, you skip X amount of stitches. There's different schools of thought of how many you skip. I'm gonna skip two just for this demonstration. Sometimes you can skip three, whatever the pattern calls are. I'm just gonna skip two. So I'm gonna skip two of the chains on my hook. So the loop on the hook does not count. And we're gonna skip the first two chains and then the third chain, identify the third chain. Again, we've wrapped it. So we have two loops on the hook. Keep those on the hook. And we're gonna go into the third chain, draw up a, loop, up a strand up through the chain and now we have three on, on the hook. Again, that's lighting. So I'm gonna repeat that again. So we're gonna wrap the hook, skip two chains, and in the third chain, we're gonna insert into the chain, draw up a strand through the chain, and we've got three on the, on the hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through the first two loops only the first two. So we're gonna pull that, that yarn over that's there, that's at the end there. We're gonna pull that through the first two loops. And now we have two loops on the hook. And we're gonna do that one more time. We're going to yarn over and pull that yarn over through those two. That's a double crochet. It's double because you're doing that action twice. I'm gonna show you again. We're gonna wrap the wrap the hook, so we have two loops on the hook. Go into the next chain. Grab the strand and bring it through the chain. We have three on the hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull that yarn over that's on the hook there through the first two loops. So that's one. And then we're gonna yarn over again and pull it through the next two loops, that's two. That's why they call it a double. So we're just gonna continue that. We're gonna wrap the hook, go into the chain, grab the strand, bring it through the chain, three loops on the hook, yarn over, bring the yarn over through the first two, and then yarn over and bring that yarn over through the last two. That is a double crochet. So we're gonna do that all the way to the end of the, the chain. So we're gonna wrap, go into the chain, bring the strand through, three on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. The stitch we did previously was the single, and the reason they call it a single, because you only do that motion once. The double, you do this motion, the motion that, this motion here, you yarn over through two loops, that's once, yarn over through another loop, another two, that's twice, you do it twice. And this makes a taller stitch because when you do this yarn over through two and yarn over through two, it's taller than if you just yarn over through one set instead of two sets. <laughs> and you're gonna use a lot of doubles in many, many stitches. I think double crochet is, if I had to guess, I would say that stitch is probably the most commonly used stitch in other patterns. A lot of other stitches and patterns use the double crochet. For instance, granny squares. Most granny squares 
use double crochets. So we got to the end, and now I'm going to show you how to do the turning chain for a double. And I'm going to show you the way that most people do it and the way that I'm starting to do it now. So when we did our, we get to the end, our turning chain, we would chain one and turn for singles. For doubles, we're going to chain three and turn. And you're probably asking, why, why aren't we going to do two? Chaining two is for another stitch that we're going to do on Thursday. So we're going to chain three. to chain three and turn. That's gonna give us our height. We're gonna wrap our hook and in the stitch we just made, not the chains, in the double crochet, the top of the double crochet, which is not going to be this big hole. It's the hole at the very top. And again, at the edge of our stitches, we have our Vs. And there's a hole right under the Vs. So you find the Vs and directly under it, there's a little space. So we've wrapped our hook, and we're going to go into that space, draw up the a loop. So you're going to take the strand and draw it up, three on the loop, on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. I used to only do two chains to do a double. I'm going to, I'm starting to do three when I, when I uh, do my doubles now. There's no right or wrong way. I mean, it's that's just what I'm what I'm going to end up starting doing. That's technically the way you're supposed to do it for most things, unless the pattern says you should do it a different way. So we're going to go to the next stitch. We're going to wrap our hook and we're going to find our next stitch here, and it's right there. We're going to go in, draw up a strand, three on the on the hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. I gotta get some slack on my yarn. And we're gonna do the same thing all the way down the line. I'm gonna, we're doing doubles, so we're gonna wrap, go into the stitch, bring it up, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Wrap, into the stitch, bring up a loop, Yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Also, when you first, those of you who are first learning how to crochet, don't worry about your little sample, the first thing you, you work on, your edges being straight and rectangular and square because that's not going to happen. It will come with practice and with time. Your tension will even out. The key thing is if, you, if you're learning, those of you, of you who are learning, it's more about technique and not tension when you first learn. It's about forming the stitch. Oh, of course. Of course we're always learning. When you get to the end of the row here, there's the turning chain. Okay? It was actually the turning chain when we first started. You're going to go in the top of that. So if you're doing a pattern that has a certain number of stitches, Make certain you go in there to get the right amount of stitches. A lot of people forget about that turning chain and your stitch count will be off. And you just go in the, into that top chain to form the stitch. Okay, in about 20 seconds, we're going to start a an ad break. So I will be back. Those of you, I know some people have had, last time there was an ad break and during the ad break, before the time was up, you saw me sit and chill and relax. So I'll be back.
Why is that not doing that? Why does it say ad starting soon and it's not starting? <laughs> Um, um, oh, there it went. Why is that still? If y'all can still hear me and see me, wait until everybody's, uh, done the ads. I'm back. That's weird. We're going to go and we're going to do that. It's only played one. Okay. Some people, it'll play more than that. It's supposed to do it for three minutes. I don't know. I have it set for three minutes. Not certain. My little uh, software here says I got 30 seconds left for ads, so I'm going to wait until that's done. Okay. Okay, the ad break is done. At least it's saying it's done. Or should be done. Let me, uh... Hey there, Fairy Dust. How are you? I'm all right. I have to move my keyboard out of the way. We're just doing basic stitches this month. And I just showed her to do the single crochet and the double crochet. Now we're going to do, and I got to do this on the fly also. Uh, not that one. Move that down. And I need to. Okay. So we're going to. Show the chainless foundation single crochet. 
Yeah, I know how that is, winding down. Why am I hearing myself? Probably because I've got that like that. Okay. So we're going to do the sing the chainless foundation single crochet stitch. So you don't have to worry about going into that chain, which a lot of people have an issue with. So this is just an alternative way of starting. And those of us that know how to crochet, this is a new, a different way of starting a, um, a project. So what we're going to end up doing is we're chaining we chain two. Yeah, we chain two. We're going to chain two. And in that second chain from the hook, so the first chain you made, you're going to go in, bring up a loop. We have two on the hook. We're going to yarn over and go through one. So that's a chain. And then we're going to yarn over and go through the last two. So that is a chainless single crochet stitch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into that chain we just made. So let me, I'll recap that. We've got two chains on the hook, I mean two chains. The second chain from the hook, so the first one we did, go into the chain, bring up the strand, two on the hook. Chain one, so you're going to yarn over and go through one. And then, so that was our chain. And now we're going to do our single crochet, which we're going to yarn over through those two. That chain we just made, before we did our single, the chain we did, we're going to go into that chain, bring up the loop, two on the hook, do a chain. So yarn over through one, so that was our chain, and now yarn over through two. As we build this, on this side here will be our chains, our bottom edge of our piece. So our rows are forming this way. Instead of horizontal, they're forming vertical. So on the left here, I've got my chains, and on the right, I've got my singles. So now I'm gonna go into the chain that I just made, Bring up a loop, two on the hook, chain one, so that means yarn over, bring through one loop, so that was our chain, and then yarn over through two, that was our single. So chain, just like the, um, I don't know who sang it, the old song, from, the song from the 70s, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right of, we're stuck in the middle with you, whatever that song is. So, chains to the left, singles to the right. <laughs> that's the way I'm looking at it. So again, you're going to go into the chain that's on the left. Bring up a loop. So we have two on the hook. Chain, which is yarn over through one loop. Chains to the left. And then yarn over through the other two, which is the single. Singles to the right. Again, you're going to go through the chain, bring up a loop. Hey there, Nor Fairy. And then you're going to chain. So the chain is done. And now you're going to yarn over through the other two, which is the singles. This will make a lot easier instead of counting all those chains and getting lost in the number that you're doing and getting really confused of where to put everything. And then also the other benefit is it will make a stretchier base. This is good for like um, the bottom edge of a sweater or the sleeves of a, of a sweater. Anything that you need some stretch, some give to it. <laughs> yep. So again, we're gonna go into the stitch, bring up a, a strand. We got two, chain. So our chain is to the left. 
And now we're going to single. So we're going to yarn over and go through two singles on the right. Chain. And then we're going to single. I need some practice with it because I'm a tight hooker, as you all know. And being a tight hooker, my work curves whenever I do the chainless foundation. So with practice, and again, you can stretch this out, and that's a benefit of it also. I need to loosen up on my tension to do this. So that is the chainless foundation single crochet. So you're building your chain and your singles as you go. With that in mind, we're now going to do the chainless foundation double crochet. Since earlier we did single regular singles and regular doubles, now we're doing the chainless foundation version. So this is the chainless foundation double. It's the same thing, it's just taller stitches, and you've got the stretch. And this is real simple. It's, if you can do the single, you can do all of them. We're going to chain two. And in that first chain we did, so not the first one from the hook, the first one we did, the one by the knot, go in, bring up, wait, that's not how you do it, is it? No, that's not how you do it. It's been a while since I've made my sample. You're going to yarn over. It's important to do the yarn over. Go in to the chain, bring up a loop, three on the hook. Have you tried using a larger hook for the foundation chain? I had the same problem when I used, yes, yes, I've done that, yeah, I've done that before. And welcome, Farmer67. Yeah, I've, and that's another thing, if you have, if your foundation chain is very, your stitches are tight and your foundation chain tends to curve, you can always go up a hook for your foundation chain and then switch back. So we've chained two, after we've chained two, we've wrapped the hook, so we've yarned over, and go into the very first chain that we made, go in and draw up a loop. So we've got our two wraps, and then our draw up, which is there. And now we're going to chain, so that's a yarn over, through the first loop, and now we're gonna yarn over through two, and yarn over through two. That creates a chain and then a double. And it's the same thing. We're going to yarn over, because when you do a double, you yarn over. Go into the chain that we made. So go into the chain, bring up a loop, chain. So you're going to yarn over through the first loop. And now our chain is made. And now we're going to do our double. So we're going to yarn over through two and yarn over through two. That's how you do the chainless foundation double crochet. I've yarn, I have yarned over like you do for doubles. Go into the chain, bring up a loop, chain one, so our chain is done, and now do our doubles. And that is all there is to this stitch. So you're doing your chain at the same time you're doing each individual um, double. And you do have a little bit of a stretch that way. I'm going to do that for a little bit longer. I'm going to wrap, go into the chain, bring up a loop, then we're going to chain one. So there's our chain, and now we're going to do our double. And continue all the way down. It's just a different way of starting your your rows, 
especially if you have issues of stitching into the chain and finding which one to go into and also if you want the stretch to it. Wrap, go into our chain, draw up a loop, chain one, and then do a double. With all of this, um, the other week, Clay Miko showed me how to do a foundationist, a chainless foundation single crochet. And it blew my mind. And I don't remember how to do it. I'd have to practice again. Yeah. Usually written as FDC in a pattern. Yeah, foundationless double crochet. Yep. So again, doing this stitch, my tension, obviously you can see that my tension is very tight. I need to loosen up on my chains. But you still get the idea. You haven't picked up the hook in a while, meaning four days, and now your armor. Oh, you're getting back into it. Yeah. You got to keep that, that muscle memory and limber up and do your exercises. So that is the Chainless Foundation Double Crochet. Okay. For the rest of the stream, I'm going to work on a project that I've been working on. You're working on your corner-to-corner -corner pillowcase. Nice. I don't know if you've told me what that is. I gotta pull up something real quick. I gotta pull up this pattern. I am, let's copy this, minimize this. Bring that up, move this around. Bear with me while I pull up this pattern. I'm doing a test run on a pattern. And I've only got about four or five more rows to go. Yeah, I got five more rows to go. And don't don't laugh everybody. This is not how this is not a finished item. This is just so I can wrap my brain around the pattern and make certain my stitch count is correct and how it's formed. I found a pattern and actually fairy dust kind of inspired me the other week. They had posted a picture in the Discord of socks that I thought were knitted. It turns out they're crocheted. And I think today, yesterday, or within the past couple of days, there was another pair. They're gorgeous. So it's not a pattern that they sent me. It's a pattern I found on my own. It's a real basic sock pattern to crochet. I don't want anything intricate right now. So before I use the really good, nice, nice yarn, I got to check something real quick. Make certain I'm using the right hook. Um, and before I use the nicer yarn and the smaller hooks, just as a proof of concept to see if I know how to do it, I'm doing this in much larger, um, yarn and much larger hooks. So this is a giant sock. Okay. And it's like, nobody has a foot this big. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all on camera. You got commission for a Winnie the Pooh baby outfit. Go to, oh, nice. Okay, I've zoomed out as far as I can go. I got to readjust this because I think I got the idea of how this, the pattern works and how to do everything. Most of it's easy except the heel. The heel was the part of like, oh my, I couldn't, I figured out the heel. So I've got a couple more more rows to do around the cuff. I'm working on the ribbing, which is alternating front post and back post half double crochets, which is easy. I've got like four four more rows of that. 
But this is the sock. <laughs> okay. Um. It. And it is green, so it will work for a Christmas stocking. You have to use stitch markers. You have to. Okay. The toe is easy because it's just. You do a certain amount of chains and you're going around, you increase or whatever, and you get to a certain point. And the toe part is all single crochet, and then the foot parts all half double. And for like from here to here, you don't increase. It's all the same amount. You just keep going round and round, however many rows. And then when you get to here, when you do the heel, you have to do a certain amount, and then you only do back and forth X amount, and then you keep you're working on the back part of the heel. You're going back and forth. So you're not going around in a circle. You're you're flipping it, but you're only doing the back portion of it. And you're each time you're doing it, you're, you're decreasing to a certain point. I got that down. I was I'm like okay, I understood that perfectly. Then when you turn the heel and you start increasing, and how do you connect? And I'm like oh, I can't figure this out. I had to rip it out. And at least it was only that many rows. It wasn't the whole thing. So, and I figured, okay, that's how you join it. So, I ended up, again, this is cotton yarn. It's a worsted weight, so obviously it's way too big. But it clicked. I'm like, that's how you do it. And I've got my paper clips, and I use paper clips and safety pins as stitch markers because... Certain things, if it's a pattern that I'm just learning, if I use the plastic stitch markers, they're going to end up breaking. And I needed something that can easily slip. The paper clip was like the best. Like it can easily slide in and out. And again, this is cotton yarn. So I really wasn't worried about it um, snagging. When I do the, the nicer yarn, I probably will use real stitch markers. Um... So I know it looks kind of hideous, but again, this is just so I can wrap my brain on how it's formed. I mean, technically what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm ready for the real thing. Because this this is what, how many rows? Uh, this is three rows of alternating front and back post half double crochets and you go around you go around one way and then the way the pattern wants you to do is you slip strips to join and then you chain and then you turn it and you go around the other way so i got that concept that's the easy part it's basically the ribbing and i don't know if you can see you can kind of see there's a slight change in the pattern it's not really showing up on camera so technically i could say i got it but um, what I'm going to end up doing, and I've got, this, it's this free pattern. If anybody is interested in learning, again, I'm no expert. Obviously, Faradust has made other pairs of socks before. I am, this is the only sock I've ever made. So don't take me as an expert. But if anybody wants this pattern, it's called the Herringbone Sock pattern it's a free pattern it's all written and they have it for different sizes uh what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to quickly share my screen of what the socks look like let me resize this obviously they have used a much nicer yarn than i have so that is what the pattern looks like it's mostly like i said it's the toe and the heel are singles everything else is half doubles and it's a real basic one so if anybody wants the pattern i can link that i'll probably end up linking that anyway and they have it in different sizes they're adult patterns so they've got men's and women's sizes anywhere from a women's size five all the way up to a men's size 13. The only difference is probably the stitch count. Obviously, you're going to make it bigger or smaller. 
I am doing, this is technically the men's 10 or 11. Obviously, it's much bigger than a men's 10 or 11, but it's the stitch count for that size. Because I take a size like 10 and a half shoe. And you do have to have two different size hooks. And again, I'm not using the correct ones for the, the pattern because this is not the correct yarn. But I want to show you what I'm going to end up possibly doing. Claymica had given me some yarn, and I'm thinking about doing it, and I... Th Let me double check the pattern. The pattern is calling for... Let's see... Let's see, how much is, is it calling for? Um, is it actually saying how many, how much yardage that it's calling for? Uh, this is just saying this one brand. Let me click on this brand. I don't have this brand that they're recommending. Uh, okay, the yarn they recommend comes in a skein of 218 yards per skein. And the pattern is saying one, two skeins for each sock. So that's over 400 yards per sock. Well... I've got these skeins, they are 420 yards per sock, so it should be one one of these. These are bigger skeins. She given me these yarn, this yarn, this is um Yarn B brand authentic hand-dyed um yarn. It's a weight of one. It's a fingering weight. Uh it's merino wool. And I know technically with sock yarn, you would probably want some type of nylon or something in it for strength. Again, I'm doing this as to see if I can do it. It is a weight of one, so it is a very thin yarn. Um, 420 yards. Super Ross Merino. There's a little bit of polyester, which is that little sparkle in it that I'm assuming. Oh, I love the color too. They color they call it Southern Tropics. They've got some like some browns and some dark blues and some teals and some rusts and the little the little sparkle in it, which I the sparkle showing up on camera wonderfully on on, on here. It's really sparkly. Um, four hundred twenty should be plenty to a pair, probably yeah. And also, I stitch tight anyway. Again, I'm just doing this as a test. I've got four skeins of this. I've got four four cakes of it. Um they are recommending a 3.25 millimeter hook. We originally got it on clearance at Hobby Lobby decided that I'm not delicate enough to use it. Hey, like I told you, Clay Miko, some people can work with finer weight yarns. Some people can't. Same thing with bulky yarns. I'm not a big fan of jumbo yarns. Like any, like a size six or seven yarn, I'm not a fan of it. There are people who love that. So to each their own. I, I don't mind using finer weight. I like fours. Threes and fours are my favorite, but I don't go very high with the leg part because of because you like lower socks. True. Yeah. If you're going to do a taller sock, you're going to use more. And in about 30 seconds or so, we're going to have another ad. Wow. These ad breaks are going quick. I haven't said every half hour. Dang. Um. Yeah, I, I don't want to see you in fishnets. On that note, I think we. Need, I'm going to stop. Wait till the ad break is done.
Let me check this pattern real quick. Okay, so I'm going to need a 3, 3.25 and a 4 millimeter. Like those are in my bag because these are, that's a 4.5 and, and that's a 5.5. And, <sighs> and All righty. Let me post this now. I'll do that now while I'm doing it. Is the yarn. That back up there. And I will do, I gotta go back to my pattern. <laughs> And the smaller hook. Oh, wait, did we chain? Okay, I should be back. Maybe. What is the brand of the sock yarn you showed? I have used Patton's, Croy, and Golo, which both work well. This yarn here, it's not labeled as sock yarn. It is a, side, a weight of one. It is Yarn B Authentic Hand Dyed Lux. It, Yarn B is a Hobby Lobby brand. They've got the sticker over top of the um, brand. It's Yarn B, which is, I think that is a Hobby Lobby line. It is 100%, well, 99% merino wool. Again, I don't think they're calling it sock yarn because technically... It doesn't have any nylon or anything for strength, because usually socks you're going to want something to be a little more durable. So, yeah, that's that's the Yarn Bee Authentic Hand-Dyed Lux. And it when it's sold, it's sold in a twisted hank, like 
hand dyed yarn comes. I caked it so I can actually use it. Well, originally I caked it for Claymico so she can use it. And like I like she said that she's not delicate enough for that. <laughs> But what I'm using here is just, yeah, the ones I've used are 85% wool and 15% nylon. Exactly. F basically, again, for durability, because they're going to be on your feet, you don't want anything that's going to wear, wear out easily. Again, I'm just doing this. If it does, if it's, a, if it's a flop, if I can't do it, then I can't do it, which I think I could be able to do it, because what I'm working on right now is working. Um, I just got to be mindful that they're not going to be super durable socks. But when I'm working on this here, this green, this nasty stuff, this is, I don't even know what brand it is. It's, again, it's a bigger, a heavier weight yarn. It's cotton. It's probably, I want to say it's sugars and cream. Obviously, it's not meant for that. I just have a lot of it. And again, I'm just doing this as a proof of concept that I can do the pattern since I've never made a sock ever. Well, I take that back. On my handheld knitting um circular knitting loom i did make a quote unquote sock but it was more like a stocking and i don't even know what happened with that i might have frogged it oh yeah they'll definitely be warm and i like the sparkle in it i'm gonna make them my size not that i really am i'm not a sparkly person but why not And if it turns out well, and maybe I can make a pair for someone else. Okay, I'll catch you later, Clemico. I um, I'll message you tomorrow. So all I'm doing here is I'm doing front post half double crochet and then the next stitch back post double half double crochet and alternating and it's going to form a ribbing here for the um, top of the leg. My mom was the guinea pig for the first pair I made. Yep. Good to have guinea pigs. And I figure if I get really good at this basic pattern, there's no like intricate stitches, anything like that, then I can always try one of the more interesting patterns with like the, the puffs and the bobbles and the all the other stitches, and I can go from there. I just need to. To do it and I can't knit. Well, I can. Hey there, lady. How are you? I can knit, but I can't. I don't know really how to knit increasing and decreasing. And I don't know how to knit in, in the round. So there's no way I'm going to be knitting a pair of socks. So I was glad to find a uh, crochet pattern that worked. I'm pretty good. I was telling everybody what I'm working on is basically it's a test to see if I can make 
a pair of socks. And what I'm working on is not a proof of concept, but it's a test for myself. In crochet cotton and really big. So this is a really big sock. It's following a men's 10, 11 pattern. Obviously, this is much bigger because it's bigger yarn and bigger hooks. If you haven't tried to learn to knit yet, I intend to give it a, a go. Yeah, I, I can knit. I can do the knit stitch and the purl stitch, but that's it. I wouldn't even know where to begin for increasing and decreasing. So that's why I am, uh, like I said, let me check. Okay, this can be, wait a minute. I'm at the end of this round and I need to do a slip stitch here. Move my stitch marker. But yeah, um, I will be making a pair of socks with this yarn eventually. Let me turn and let me put my stitch marker in so I can keep track of the row that I'm on. Need three more of these. And I never realized that front post and back post half double crochets are a little difficult to do. <laughs> I've done front front and back post double crochets, and I'm okay with that, but they're, I mean, I know they're a shorter stitch, but I'm like, how do I do this? Just not, that's not a stitch I do that often. But now I'm getting the hang of it, getting in a, in a groove, I guess you could say. I think what I'm going to end up doing is get to the end of this round, and then I think we will uh, call it an evening. And then Thursday night. I will show the half double crochet stitch, the triple crochet stitch, and then possibly the double triple and the triple triple, because I know, and she's not here tonight, Crojo had asked about those stitches. So if she's around, I can show that. I feel like you might enjoy knowing that I got a drop spindle at the Sheep and Wool Festival on Sunday. Nice. I, it's a long story. Basically, I did not go. There's been issues and personal issues or whatever. Everything's fine. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad you uh, were able to go and you got a spin. spin Have you ever um, spun before? As long as you're okay, at least you have the events I shared on Discord, too. Yeah, exactly. The Alpaca, Alpaca one later this year is the exact same location. Yeah, I saw that. That I, I think I was I was confused or whatever. I thought that they were going to have Alpaca at the Sheep sheep also, but it makes sense if it's a Sheep Festival, but um, you haven't, you're going to learn. I have spun on a drop spindle. Very, very limited spinning. Um, I made my own, and that was a little 
it worked, but it was a little, um, it didn't work the best, but it still worked. I got the concept. I ended up, I did get a student spindle, and I've tried that a little bit. Got myself some roving at the festival, decided I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, definitely. Um, I need to pick that up again. Again, I would not be the person to ask on how to spin. They probably did. There were horses and everything there. I didn't see alpaca myself. Okay. Yeah, definitely give it a shot. Um, what I would suggest, and there's plenty of places online to get pointers and tips on how to spin, where I learned... And I was watching a lot of YouTube videos from this one user. And it's linked in the Discord, in the YouTuber section on my Discord. Uh, I think the channel's name is Jillian Eve. Uh, if you go back... Go back, yeah. The Jillian Eve channel, actually, if you want, I can... Um, I'll link it right here, right now. She does a lot of spinning, a lot of spinning videos, some weaving. There might be some knit, um, anything yarn, the process of making yarn and everything. She's done a whole lot of that. And I like her technique and her style and her personality. She seems really nice. So, um... That's where I kind of learned. And she goes into, if you want to learn how to spin, either from a spindle or a spinning wheel or an electric spinning wheel, she goes um, real in-depth, the technical parts of it, of what, what you have to do. And she gives different, different um, tips, tips and techniques and I think she's a good teacher at it because I think she used to be an elementary school teacher. So she kind of has patience. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, so we're going to do a... a... That's a weird join. Okay, that's that weird join. You should grab all the business cards... I grabbed and shared them to Discord. Got some funny ones. Fun ones for luxury stitch markers and stuff. Yeah, definitely, if you want to do that. I'm I'm okay with that. Especially if they promote small businesses. I saw that... Um, And I don't think, well, I don't know if there's any, well, I know I do have a couple people that watch my stream that um, spin, but I didn't find out till like yesterday that Maurice from Electric Eel, Electric Eel is um, one of the more popular brand lines and brands of electric spinning wheels. I have two electric eels. He was there. He was with you were with two teenagers. It's not like I got to look around like I wanted to. But what I did get get to see you really liked. Oh cool. That's all that matters. But yeah, I had found out that Maurice from Electric Eel was there. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I need to break out my electric spinning wheels and practice more. I haven't done that in months. And I am no expert in spinning of any sort. 
I don't have the budget or the room for a traditional spinning wheel. So that is why I got the electric ones. They're mine are tiny. And the same thing with the spindle. The spindle is very inexpensive. Okay, I lied. I said at the end of that row that I would stop, but I'm going to continue on this row. The spinning wheel, yes. But I can understand that because a lot of them are handmade and the tech, the um, technology and everything that goes into it and... It's just not, you slap a piece, a couple pieces of wood. If you're buying an expensive wheel, it's for pottery. Love you all, but sorry. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, I, I appreciate pottery. I've never used a pottery wheel before. If I can make it happen on a mini one or a drop spindle, I'm using that. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with using what you got within your uh, your means and your budget and your space or whatever. Yeah. That that is something that I've I've realized when it comes to the um, fiber world that there can be some snobs Found, finally found a community studio to go to that won't charge me the amount I could use to buy a wheel. I'm so excited to get my hand into some clay. Have you ever... Um, ever... Um, what do they call it? I don't know what they call it. Have you ever used a pottery wheel before? Got to make certain I'm going in the right stitch. These half doubles are really difficult to see. If I'm having this much trouble with this yarn, I can only imagine how it's going to be when I use the weight of one yarn. An academic potter. I paid a lot of money to learn to use a wheel. Oh, sweet. The only time I've ever done any type of ceramics or any of that type of thing, it was a class in high school, and we didn't have, well, I think there was one pop, one wheel, but there wasn't enough time for everybody to use it, so everything was made without the, a potter's wheel. More like pinch pots and that type of thing. Like I was saying, in the fiber world, there can be some snobs and some uh, people that look down on those that can't afford certain equipment, like the best needles and the best this and all that. You don't, you don't need all that. Hand building is awesome. I started learning with hand building. Um... Trying to get this the stitch correct. It's in every single art group, I swear. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. You're going to get that no matter what. I can't, can't remember. Well, it doesn't really, remember, doesn't really matter how many rows of these I do, because this is just the ribbing. I can make this as big or small as I want. So I think this is row 60. Let me check my... I wasn't counting. That was row 65. The pottery world gets set down pretty hard, thankfully. Most of the time, the tools we need, we got to make, make them ourselves. I've heard that about the pottery world, that, yeah, you, if you can't, you kind of have to make them yourself. Okay. 
Okay, let me move my stitch marker. Snobbery is definitely present in the quilting community. I refer to them as quilting police. Okay, chain one. Turn this monstrosity of whatever this thing is. It was like a sock for a giant. Can't really get that first stitch done. All right, I think we got it. I'm glad the hobby police do exist. You mean don't, um, don't exist everywhere. I'm hoping. Hope you mean don't. That's an, it's, speaking of that, with the with the snobbery and whatever, the people who look down on the, on others in a certain type of hobby or art form. I've noticed that in the fiber world, in the knitting, crocheting, weaving world, that for some reason crocheters are looked down upon. Pottery police, pa painting police, everything you can imagine. Yeah. I've noticed that there is a, um, that whole, like, oh, you crochet, that type of thing. And I don't know why. I don't. It's, it's related to knitting, but it's a totally different. It looks, you, I, crocheters look down on knitters, knitters look down on crocheters. <laughs> okay, I don't look down on either. I can appreciate the artistry and the beauty in both. And I can tell, looking at it mostly, for the most part, I can tell if something is knitted or crocheted. Not always, but a lot of times I can tell. And I'm okay either way. Not like it. Real worried. I'm going into new yarn craft streams on Twitch because of it. Ow. Wow. Well, this here, and I You've been a viewer of mine long enough. Judgment-free. I might joke around with somebody, but if somebody knits then and they want to come here and talk about knitting, that's fine. Hey there, Citric for Blue. How are you? Uh, about less than a minute, we're going to have another ad break. And I think after the ad break, if I can get to the end of a row, of a round, we might be ending soon. I know you just got here, Citric. Let's see. You know what? No, I'm going to end this row because I'm almost to the end and I'll do another row because I'm on. Yeah, I'll finish this, this project. And when the ad break is over, I'll explain what I'm doing since Citric just got in and there might be other people that might be coming in that are new. Get some more.
one more. But yeah, I'm going to get my stuff from the Sheep and Wolf Festival sorted. Post your haul in the Discord first and share the business cards. Yeah, definitely. Love to see what you got and feel free to post those business cards. I will be back after this ad break. It should be starting. Come on. I don't know if anybody's seeing an ad. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Well, it's saying, if anybody can see, can hear me, it's got about less than a minute until we're back from the ad break. And if you can see me, just all I know is just going to work on this. I'm not really saying anything. Okay, I think we're back. I think what it, what it is, I think some people will see an ad and some people won't. Either way, for those of you who were watching, who did see an ad, all I was doing just working on this project, and those of you who were t had just recently tuned in, I am doing... Yeah, it is. Again, I... I know very little about how the ads work. I just figured out how to set up the ad manager to actually run mid-roll ads. So, I, I don't know. So, what I'm doing is a test on a pattern just so I can see and I know how to do the pattern. I am making a sock and obviously, this is the wrong yarn and the wrong hooks to make a sock because it's 
way too big. But I just wanted to uh, figure out how to make, to do the actual pattern, to wrap my hand around it. And I think I got it. And then when I'm 100% sure that I'm okay with it, then I will make the actual sock in this yarn here with obviously smaller hooks. And I'm almost to the end of this row. Let me get to the end here real quick. And when I get to the end of this row, I have one more row to do. I mean, I could go longer if I needed to, depending on how long I wanted them. This is the um, leg, actually it's the cuff part of the sock. I've got a stitch or two left. Let me do my little uh, slip stitch join. Then chain one, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do a little put my little makeshift stitch marker back in. These brightly colored paper clips, I think, work great for me on this yarn. So, I'm using size 4 cotton. Obviously, you wouldn't do it to make a real sock because it's way too big. But that's the toe. That's the big foot. Figured out the heel and then the leg portion and the cuff. I think I got it. I think I got it. This could be a stocking, actually. It's from heel to cuff. Let's do from, not heel, from toe, from the tip of the toe to the back side of the cuff, like the back of the, of the, the leg, that back corner, because that's the only way you can really measure it. So I'm at the toe, and then all the way over here, we are, let's get it flat, we're about 25 inches. That's a decent size for a stocking. I don't know if I'm going to keep this as a stocking. I'll probably end up frogging all of this. <laughs> I mean, it just happened to be green. It, I got a big, huge ball of this cotton yarn. I was like... I'm not going to have to worry about changing out yarn because I got plenty of it. So, uh, so I just said, what the hell? What the hell? And went with it. So I'm on the last row, and all the last row is just single crochet all the way around. And it being cotton yarn, it can split because it's not the best cotton it is it's also been used and frogged and used and frogged and but I think I'm now to the point that I'm comfortable with this pattern that Thursday, after we do the half double, the triple, I will do the chainless foundation half double stitch and possibly the double triple and the triple triple on Thursday. Um, get all of those done, then... I will work on the real deal. Even though this is dark, it might show up on stream, possibly. Mainly because of that sparkle that's in that yarn. Okay. 
have to get out my uh, smaller hooks because I need a 3.25 millimeter and a 4 millimeter because it takes two hooks. It takes a smaller hook to do. Let me double check. Smaller hook to do the leg and the the foot part the toe yeah the toe and the heel use a bigger hook cuz it's it's a different stitch actually Oh, I'm already at the uh the end of the round. <laughs> I know it's not really showing up well because it's green and then Okay, we're gonna go here and we're just gonna Yeah, we'll just slip stitch into that. Come on. You can do a slip stitch. Take out my stitch marker. Take out my other stitch markers, which I got a bunch throughout this whole thing. That's one thing if you're gonna I've learned that if you're gonna do socks, stitch markers are your friend. Okay. This one I gotta pull from the inside to get that one out. And then this is a safety pin. So this one shouldn't be that difficult. I think that's it. Yeah, I took all the other ones out. That's my stock. And I'm happy with the ribbing. Obviously, when I make a pair for myself, I'll work on a portion and then probably off camera, try them on to see as I go and then make adjustments as I need. Yeah, I really like how that ribbing came out. Yeah, you could definitely see it on camera. This is half double and then this is half double Front post, front post half double, and back post half double, alternating. I've never made socks before. This here is just a practice, so I know how to do the pattern, because this is my first time ever making a sock. Because Clay Miko had gifted me four cakes of this Really nice yarn. It's a fingering weight yarn. And I'm like, let me try to make a pair of socks out of it. And I really like the color. Yeah. So I, how in the heck do you make your front post, back post look that good? Practice? <laughs> Practice, I guess. And this was actually, to, to be honest, this is the first time I've done front post half double and back post half double. I've never done one before. I've done front post double and back post double, but never the half double. It took a little while because it's a little bit shorter of a stitch and trying to get, and it, this is cotton, so it didn't have a lot of stretch to it. And I'm like, Yeah, this whole thing, except the toe, for this pattern, the toe and the heel are single crochet. And then the foot and the leg and the cuff are half double, except the cuff is the front and the 
front post and the back post alternating, but they're half doubles. That's all that this is. There might be a chain here and there. Oh, it's a chain. But yes, yeah, Citric, I've never done socks before. That's why I did this. To see if I could do it. And I can do it. The heel was the hard part. But it really wasn't that that difficult. And let me just let me just double check something. Where I join. Okay, that could have been. It's also the yarn. I could have got a little tighter there. But at least it's even. So I'm happy with it. As a um, as a test, I'm happy with it. That get out of my way, yarn. E. At this point, I'm just gonna go with what I've been doing with this sweater because I refuse to frog it again. I personally fight myself if I do it again. That's another thing I've never done. I've never made a sweater. That is on my list. Within the next 12 months or so, I want to try to do a sweater. And I've got a pattern I've been looking at. Um, on YouTube, on the channel's Bag -a Day Crystal. She's got, and I don't know how many years ago she did it. It is a cardigan sweater it could be for men or women the sizes she gives are for I think small medium and large I think I would have to adjust it for my size but I think I would be okay with it so do the math and do some adjustments I really it's a real basic stitch pattern I kind of like the look of it so that is something after I get these socks done I'm gonna look into making a cardigan. Uh, let's see who's online and see if we can go raid somebody. Um, okay, Grammy, good night. Going on. Let me lucky and see what is over here. I'm just scrolling through and Okay, what is this? Um, I've never been to this, um, stream before. We're going to go check him out. I don't know what he's making. He's crocheting. We're going to go raid Druby Zoo. And I will catch everybody on Thursday. We, like I said, we're going to do half double, triple, double, triple, and triple, triple. Everybody have a good evening. And if you're going to stick around for the raid, 
join the raid, and happy crafting.